Uh, Miss Anderson, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Great. The first question I'd like to ask you is, could you tell us about yourself and your journey to this point? Sure. Happy to. Um, so I'm a lawyer by training. I um, got my uh, law degree in the United States and um I was always, I went to law school with a commitment to advancing justice. I thought I would be focused more exclusively on doing so in the United States, where we certainly have many challenges. But early in my career, I had a wonderful opportunity to serve as a law clerk to one of the judges at the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia. I was in the first set of law clerks uh, uh, there in 1995. And it was really transformational for my career, opened my eyes to the needs and opportunities in international justice work, human rights work, and uh, fell in love with the field and uh, have pursued it ever since. I worked for Human Rights Watch for a number of years and then uh, transitioned into advancing human rights and the rule of law through international development work um, with the American Bar Association Rule of Law Initiative, and uh, also served as the executive director of the American Society of International Law for a number of years. And then for the last five years, I've had the privilege of leading the World Justice Project, advancing the rule of law around the world, including in the United States. So in the end, I've uh, been able to have it all. Fantastic. Thank you so much. So what does the day of international criminal justice mean to you? Well, it means a lot of things uh, to me, both personally and professionally. Uh, it, the day, of course, marks the day, a uh, quite remarkable day, when the Rome statute creating the International Criminal Court uh, was uh, concluded. And that uh, was a culmination of work that really began uh, with the Yugoslavia Tribunal, where I began my career. And so that's the personal connection um, in, in developing a system of international justice. We had had a number of ad hoc tribunals, of course, leading up to the creation of the International Criminal Court. Um, but that was the dream of many of us working in the field, that there would be a permanent court to adjudicate the, the worst crimes. And uh, so that's that's um, both per both personally and professionally uh, meaningful. I also think about the day more broadly than just about those international justice institutions. And in, in thinking about it, I was reflecting on that remarkable opening statement that Justice Jackson made at Nuremberg, where he described those trials as one of the most significant tributes that power has ever paid to reason. And I think in just a few words, that sums up what the International Day of Justice uh, means. It's power giving way to reason through justice. Wow, that's absolutely incredible. Power giving way to reason. Hmm. Amazing, incredible. Could you tell us about the World Justice project and the important work that you do? Sure. Well, in many ways, the World Justice Project is really about advancing that idea um, of the rule of law, that law, reason uh, will uh, help us uh, mediate dynamics, uh, uh, political and, and power dynamics in ways that generate peace, um, justice, an opportunity for communities the world over. So that's our mission to advance the rule of law. We do it through uh, a, a range of activities. We like to think of ourselves really as a resource for the global rule of law movement. We gather data uh, measuring the rule of law now in 142 countries and bring that data and evidence to bear on efforts by local change makers around the world helping them design evidence-based approaches to strengthening governance and the rule of law. Wow, that's incredibly important work. How fantastic. Um, so how crucial, how crucial are justice 
and the rule of law going to be in relation to humanity's survival? Well, I'm a little biased in this regard. Uh, this is, of course, my life's work and passion. Um, but I really believe uh, that the rule of law is foundational to everything else that we are trying to advance in the world. And we see that in the data that we collect. The World Justice Project gathers uh, data about the rule of law in practice now in 142 countries. And we can correlate, we can, we can analyze that data and see powerful correlations between stronger rule of law and greater uh, public health, stronger rule of law and greater access to education. Um, stronger rule of law, more peace. Stronger rule of law, more economic development. So uh, it's it, it really does seem to be where we have to start to lay the foundation for uh, communities of justice, opportunity, and peace. Wow, that's absolutely incredible. I mean, I listen. I I find it very inspiring listening to you. Um, I mean, I genuinely do, because it's absolutely true what you're saying. And it makes me think about goal 16, peace and justice. So I must I'm, I'm sure you must have thought to yourself many times in relation to the 17 sustainable development goals, that in order to for those goals to be a success, there appears to be one then that's incredibly important. <laughs> peace and justice. Goal 16, the rule of law. I'm sure you must have thought a similar thing yourself. Indeed, we we do. You know, there's a funny competition uh, among advocates for the different goals. Everybody thinks their goal is the most important. Um, so I, um, I, I, I'm not necessarily going to try and make that case. But I do think that the rule of law is importantly instrumental to much of what we're trying to achieve in the sustainable development agenda. And it's something that WJP is very much committed to gathering data, measuring how we're doing on achieving goal 16 and trying to understand the relationship between uh, progress in governance and so much of the other things that we're trying to achieve in the sustainable development goals. Very interesting. Um, OK, so could you give us an example of justice and the rule of law having a profound and inspirational impact in relation to humanity's survival? Well, my goodness, uh, that's a big question, uh, humanity's survival. Um, I guess there are two uh, current examples that come to mind. Um, and, and one is the conflict in Ukraine. We, I, I think we can't really fully understand what's going on there without um, reflecting on uh, a, a, a really uh, it, it, uh, a conflict over governance and the rule of law. So one of the things that we see in the World Justice Project's rule of law data is over the last seven years, Ukraine was one of the top 10 improving countries on rule of law, steadily making progress uh, in strengthening governance, curbing corruption, improving access to justice and protection of human rights, still has a long way to go, but was making very steady progress in our index on the rule of law. Meanwhile, Russia was heading in the opposite direction. And I think that that tension uh, over the future of, of governance in Ukraine and frankly, in, in many of the other countries uh, in the in the region of the former Soviet Union is really what is at the heart of the conflict there. The people of Ukraine have a different vision for the future of governance in their country than Vladimir Putin does. And um, they're, they're willing to risk all uh, for that, for that vision. And, and that, that conflict is playing out uh, over and over again in many contexts around the world. So, uh, that's a, that's an example, I think, of um, the, the critical importance of the rule of law and, uh, and, and standing up for it. The, the other example, thinking even more broadly about humanity's survival, I, I can't help but think about the 
just fundamental challenges we have relating to protection of the environment and uh, dealing with climate change. And here again, the rule of law has a really critical role to play. Uh, we see in our data uh, important correlation between stronger governance and protection of the environment. And you can understand how that plays out because weaknesses in the rule of law undermine environmental protection. Corruption, for example, can mean that regulatory enforcement of environmental laws is weakened. Or um, we see it in uh, problems in, in the justice system where people who are victims of environmental crimes cannot access remedies for their uh, deprivations. Uh, checks on government authority uh, also are critical, play a critical role in protecting the environment so that uh, executives take that long-term perspective, not um, seeking personal gain. So the rule of law is, is fundamental to good governance generally, but to safeguarding our environment, and as you say, humanity's survival in the end. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Well, given what you've just said, and I, you know, obviously you've talked about the situation in Ukraine, you've talked about the protection of our planet and its resources and the way in which we, we behave and how we treat it. And the rule of law is, is kind of fundamentally important. In fact, we're going to talk with Philippe Sands, who, of course, you'll know, uh, who talks a lot about the issue about the protection of our, of our planet um, in, in a few days time. But given everything that we know, and it's quite a sad situation, I find it sad, Miss Anderson, when I think about everything that's going on. I mean, I've seen a lot. I've been everywhere. I've been sort of darkest places in the last uh, 25 years, 100, what is it, 144 countries now I've just traveled. And I and I sort of, I worry, and I, particularly about how we're evolving. I thought, I thought over these years, that I would feel more hopeful. And, and actually what I'm seeing is something that's that I, that I didn't expect and I'm sad to see. Can I ask you, given the state of where we are at this moment, do you personally have hope we can still survive? Yes, oh absolutely. I don't think I don't think you can work in in international human rights and rule of law without being an optimist. Um, and uh, for all the challenges you know and they are real, um, there are also lots of of, of, there's lots of progress. I mean, that we celebrate this day of international justice itself uh, is remarkable, it reflects some remarkable progress in the development of a system, norms of international accountability and justice. And sometimes we lose sight of that um, because it is two steps forward, one step back. And uh, and, and it, it feels harder than it should be. Um, but but I think if we step back and think about the longer sweep of time, we can see really remarkable progress. And we can also see it in individual cases uh, and, and, and wins for victims in many different contexts that uh, slowly but surely, um, you know, the moral arc of the universe does bend toward justice and we're, we're well along our way on that arc. Just so you know, I'm with you and I get up every day, you know, believing that we can, you know, whatever, whatever difference we can make is worthwhile. So I, I'm with you all the way, right to the very end, for sure. OK, so um, what advice, ever so important this, what advice would you give to a young person who is thinking of going into the legal profession? Yeah, well, a couple of things I would say about that. One is I would say do your homework and um, uh, really try to understand what it is to work in the law and to work as a lawyer or in a in a legal field. Um, it's not all like it you know, looks on TV or in the movies. Um, so try to find opportunities to expose yourself um, to that and and really interrogate whether it is a good fit for you and how you want to spend your time. Um, I think sometimes people get caught up with the kind of lofty goals of, of justice or some of the drama um, that uh, occurs um, in, in, you know, but in, in the law, but not all that frequently. Um, and I think it's important 
for people who are going into the field to understand what the day to day is and and um, determine whether that is in fact a good fit for them. Um, and then I think once you you figure that out, um, I always encourage folks uh, to stay abreast of current developments, uh, particularly if you're interested in international law uh, and the field of international justice and human rights. The field is constantly evolving with new institutions being developed all the time. New fields of law are being developed all the time. And that's where the opportunity is. And certainly that was my experience. When I was in law school, there was no field of international criminal law. There were no cl classes on international criminal law, but I graduated in 1993. That was the year that the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia was established. And uh, we dusted off the um, judgment from Nuremberg and the, as our only precedent and developed from there a whole new field of international justice. And um, I happened to be in the right place at the right time and could be a part of that um, developing area of law. And uh, I think there, there are many such opportunities for young lawyers today and I encourage uh, folks to be entrepreneurial and um, and take part of that, take part in the development of uh, of really incredibly interesting and important um, part of our global governance. Thank you, thank you, Miss Anderson. Fantastic. Okay, is there anything that individuals can do to support justice and a strong rule of law? Absolutely. That, you know, it's one thing we say here at the World Justice Project, the rule of law is not just for judges and lawyers. It is really for all of us. We all benefit from it, from good governance, from compliance with agreed norms, and the peace and predictability that that brings to our communities and our societies. So we are all stakeholders in it and we all have something to contribute. In the way that we conduct ourselves personally, professionally, we should do so in a, in a way that has integrity, that is compliant um, with laws. We can uh, participate. If we live in a democracy, we can participate in governance and it's, in my view, an obligation of all of us to do that. Um, to roll up our sleeves, certainly to vote, but also to find other ways to participate in, in the governance um, project. And I'd also encourage folks to look at the Rule of Law Index, which the World Justice Project uh, publishes. It scores and ranks 140 countries, 142 this year. Uh, our next index will be out in October. And it scores and ranks countries on uh, eight different factors of the rule of law. Things like protection of fundamental rights, corruption, uh, the functioning of the civil and criminal justice system, checks and balances on the executive and so on. And it, uh, and then we break that down into 44 sub factors. So you can look at you know, different dimensions of those parts of our governance and see how your country uh, ranks and fares. And one of the things that's really interesting about the index is it shows that every country in the world has strengths and weaknesses. This is a never ending project that we have to strengthen the rule of law. So take a look at that data, see where the weaknesses are in your country. Think about how is that showing up in my community and then look around and find the organizations that are working on that. One of the areas that we're really preoccupied with at the World Justice Project is a global challenge we have in ensuring access to justice for citizens for their everyday legal problems. We've undertaken uh, data collection about this, surveyed people in 101 countries about their experience of everyday legal problems. And it's really astonishing. There are 1.4 billion people globally who lack access to justice to solve their everyday civil problems, civil justice problems. And these often have very profound impact in people's lives, causing some 30% uh, that we found had a stress-related or health consequence from unsolved legal problems. 
uh, another 24, 25% had uh, a displacement from their employment or from their housing because of an unsolved legal problem. So again, we can see the relationship between the functioning of the justice system and other dimensions of well-being. So there are great organizations in every community working on uh, addressing this justice gap, um, providing information to people about how to access justice um, services, legal aid, and solve their everyday problems. So that's an area that I'd certainly encourage people to look at. Fantastic. Thank you, Ms. Anderson. Well, the last question that I uh, want to ask you, and very important one too, is how can people support the World Justice Project and where do we find information? Absolutely. So there's information um, on our website, theworldjusticeproject.org, about our organization. You can find all the data that I've been talking about, um, about how we measure the rule of law, in different contexts there and play around with the data and analyze it in different ways. So I definitely encourage folks to look at that. We'd welcome your support. Anyone who's a lawyer, um, we would be delighted to have you participate in our annual survey that feeds data into our, um, uh, into our rule of law index. And you can also follow us, of course, on social media. I think we're on all the platforms and uh, we'd love to welcome you to our rule of law movement. Well, Miss Anderson, thank you so much for uh, for the interview today. It's absolutely thrilling to be able to speak to you. Uh, the work that you do is absolutely incredible. You know, keep going, keep going, and make a strong rule of law for us all. And then, of course, the Sustainable Development Goals and other great challenges we face can be achieved. But thank you for what you do. It's incredible. My pleasure, and thank you for helping spread the word. Take care. Good luck. Bye-bye.